Hey there, Postal here. So we've got some news uh, from Wargaming in regards to a special pilot that can be earned over the month of September. Let's go ahead and take a quick look at that. Alright, so the pilot is going to be for the ME410. This is a pilot I've been talking about for a while. Um, just now we're getting the opportunity to get it. It is a full month mission, which is good. It's only 15 missions. We're going to take a quick look at them in just a minute. Um, and, and having a full month to take care of that is actually going to be a, a pretty good thing for the community. So what is the ME410 if you don't have it? Well, if you don't have it, you need to get this plane. This plane doesn't need a special pilot, but if they're going to give us a special pilot, we'll take it, right? The ME410 is one of the stronger Tier 6 heavy fighters, and that's saying something because all the Tier 6 heavy fighters are actually really quite good. Um, the ME410 has two 30mm cannons, two 20mm cannons, and two 30 caliber machine guns. Um, all this firepower combined in the center here is pretty fearsome, especially at tier 6, but it can hold its own at tier 7 for sure. You've got a mediocre, um, but okay, rear gunner here. And you've got four mediocre, but okay rockets. I actually don't use them all that often. I'm, I'm always highly tempted to just take them off. I save them just in case my bots and or non-bot teammates uh, decide that we don't want to flip a sector and I'm like no we need to flip it so I keep the rockets for that exact situation uh, this is a very fast plane not very maneuverable good uh, decent altitude performance uh, a real true um, boom and zoomer kind of thing and, and so you want to you literally with this plane you boom and you keep on zooming very rarely do you actually turn uh, in like a turn fight obviously you'll turn flying around the map but don't ever get yourself into a turn fight in this plane um, I've yelled at many a, a, a pilot in an ME410 for turn out turn me when I'm in the turnier of the two planes um, so yeah but this is a very very strong plane uh, well regarded in the community as it should be um, and so the fact that it's actually getting a pilot that's going to make it even stronger is questionable to me to be honest uh, I kind of wonder why, why we need a, a pilot for this but who am I to argue with a extra special pilot, right? There is some nuance to that because some of the special uh, skills that you're going to be getting with the pilot um, don't quite fit at least my uh, build for this plane. So let's take a quick look at the um, the pilot himself, Albrecht Schneider, uh, the Night Hunter. All right, so you have 30 days to complete these 15 missions. We're going to look at them one by one in just a second here. What I do like about the missions is the vast majority of them are in any number of battles. Um, I would say like two thirds of them are, are that kind of thing where cumulatively, cumulatively you just, you know, you complete them as you're doing your dailies and things of that nature. Obviously, you need to be mindful of them. Some of them need specific aircraft that you're trying to take down or specific aircraft that you need to be flying. Uh, but the vast majority of them are just, you know, going through your, your normal thing. There are a few that need to be completed in one battle, and we'll go over that in just a second. But before we get to that, let's take a look at uh, the pilot skills. So, Albrecht here, Mr. Schneider, Captain Schneider, whatever. Um, he comes with five skill points. Um, two of them are going to be unique, and then you get three free on top of that. So the first unique skill is going to be replacing your protection expert skill. Um, so that's the one that kind of throws me off. The protection expert skill is not something that I personally keep on my ME410. I tend to maximize the speed and the damage output. So having the protection expert skill is a, is a little off for my builds. Um, but that being said... Not only do you get the protection expert skill, but you also get plus 10% damage with the forward firing armament. Okay. And plus 10% damage with the rockets. I don't know how effective that's going to be because the rockets aren't all that strong, but plus 10% is not a bad thing. So you get that on top of protection expert, right? Um, this only works while he's in the ME410. So if you move him to a different plane, he will not have... Um, Oh, excuse me. He will not have that skill set. 
So here's the protection expert skill. Normally it takes two points. Protection expert um, positively impacts the aircraft durability and resistance to critical damage equipment. Meaning, um, you know, this type of equipment, if you had it set for protecting your plane, so things like engine armor protection, things like um, cockpit armor, and eh, nothing would be in the gun. So those two items specifically would be the only two that you would have access to because they're the only two that that fit the equipment slot items here. You'd get a 40% um, you know, buff to those particular items. And then on top of that, you're going to get the 10% damage um, buff to the guns and 10% um, damage buff to the rockets. Meaning... Um, you know, each of these rockets, instead of doing 7,200, uh, you're going to be pumping out closer to 8,000 damage. Not a huge, you know, buff to the rockets, but quite a huge buff to the guns, considering, you know, you're putting out at tier 6, you're putting out, I'm putting out 650 damage right now per second. Um, an additional 65 DPS is not going to be a bad thing by any means, again, especially at tier 6 already a very very strong plane at tier six plus ten percent is going to be significant thing of it is is i don't have any equipment that's going to be buffing my my survivability so i'm actually losing out on that aspect of it um and, but it just kind of is what it is right i guess i, I get that to get the ten percent uh damage buff the other item that you get is boost expert so this is going to replace the Eagle Eye skill. Um, Eagle Eye typically gives you 10% um, more view range, if I remember correctly. Let's take a quick look here. Eagle Eye is this one right here. Yep. Um, range at which enemy aircraft are detected, excuse me, is increased by 10%. Um, and so what that means is I don't have that on my, my skill right now, but... Um, instead of having that, you get plus 3% boost speed, excuse me, plus 3% speed boost and plus 10% engine cooldown rate. So again, you're really, um, helping your overall impact with your, um, speed ability. And so that, that's absolutely awesome in my opinion. And that'll allow a plane that's already very quick to be even quicker, uh, faster for sure. And we want to make sure that um, you know, that's definitely the, the path I would be pushing down anyway with this plane is speed, as you saw with my, my normal build. Starts off with five points. Um, a lot of us, a lot, a lot, a lot of us have an ME410 and play it pretty often enough to have well beyond a five-point pilot already in it. So initially, uh, the ME410 pilot is actually going to be a downgrade for your ME410 for somebody that might have a eight point pilot or more might actually be a, a slight downgrade. Um, especially if you've got a 10 or a 12 point pilot, like some people out there have, you might get him and be like, wait, what the heck is going on? That being said, in the long term, the plus 10% damage with your guns, plus 10% damage with your rockets, on top of protection expert skill, plus 3% speed boost, and the plus 10% um, engine cooldown rate are going to be uh, definitely the way to go. I'm certainly looking forward to being able to get him. Um, you know, my, my current pilot is a nine point pilot, nothing over the top crazy, but it's just certainly stronger than five points. The engine guru, I obviously will be balanced out by the, um, the additional speed that I'll be getting from the adjusted Eagle Eye. Um, I personally have online aerodynamics expert to help with that speed as well. And then I've also got uh, five points going towards Marksman 1 and Marksman 2. Considering three points is going to be going towards Protection Expert and the uh, Eagle Eyed, that'll leave three... Well, it says there's three free, free experience. We'll have to see. Protection Expert might be a one-point skill with this particular pilot. Um, it says there's three points available. And so with three, um, having three points available, it's going to... We'll see exactly where I put that three free points. Once I get the pilot, we'll see if I actually have, if you actually get three free points. If you only have two, I'm definitely going to go with Marksman 1. If I have three, I might adjust it to something else. Um, we'll just have to see once we get the pilot in our hangar. 
All right, so enough talk about the actual pilot and what he potentially could do. Let's take a look at these missions. And they're certainly more difficult than the, the Tier 3 premium plane missions that we just had, but they're not over-the-top crazy. And, and like always, I'm going to quantify this with... I recommend everybody try to get the pilot. Not necessarily to get him, but trying to get him, you're going to get a decent amount of rewards. Some really good rewards, actually, as well. And so even if you don't get the pilot, and this goes for if you don't get a premium plane when those missions are coming up, um, still attempt to get it so you can just get the free things out of the deal. Do your normal daily grinds. Um, if you happen to get the, the rewards, then yay. If you don't, well, you know, at least you tried. So let's take a, a quick look here at Captain Schneider and the 15 missions. Um, remember, it's just missions. The game's meant to be fun. So if it's stressing you out, then don't don't push yourself to, to um, do anything that's going to... What's the point of playing a game if you're not having fun? You can quote me on that. All right, so mission number one, earn 45,000 personal points in any number of battles. Um, I guarantee there's going to be somebody out here that does this mission in two battles. Um, 45,000 personal points. Uh, the good thing, again, it's in any number of battles. Take your time. Even if you're only getting four or 5,000 personal points in each battle, it's only 10 battles. Uh, and you get a free uh, premium day. Mission number two, destroy 12 enemy bombers in any number of battles. Um, the good thing is it's any number of battles. I would not be playing higher tier, <laughs> maybe tier 8. Um, I would not be playing tier 9 and tier 10. Um trying to do this now i do question it says any uh, it says enemy bombers i assume it doesn't mean the bombing runs but maybe it does and if it does then it doesn't really matter what tier you play but um if you're playing tier tier 9 and tier 10 um and you get an enemy ju-287 or ef-131 yeah you can take out a javelin and kill him but you're gonna spend half your battle chasing them down so it's typically easier to take out something like an ME410 and just own the battlefield because an ME410, any of the tier 6 heavy fighters are really going to just completely own tier 5 through tier 7 bombers. And so um, that's probably the tier that I would aim for. Again, if the bombing runs count towards this, that makes it certainly a lot easier. Uh, you get some airframe elements and mechanical parts, which is always nice for specialization. Mission 3, earn 8,000 capture points in any number of battles. It's going to take a little while. Um, you know, even if you're averaging 400 capture points a battle, it's still going to take you 20 battles. You do get an upgraded engine out of the deal, which if you don't have an ME410, you can place on your ME410. Um, and so, you know, that's certainly not a bad thing. Um, again, it's just any number of battles to get your capture points. And capture points are capture points. They don't need, you don't need to be capturing a sector to get capture points. The, by defending a sector and getting your some of your capture points back, that goes towards capture points. Keep that in mind. I've gotten some of my best capture point games um, while defending sectors because just uh, like enemies kept coming and I just kept killing them. Um, mission number four. You get a s supply crate out of mission number four. Destroy 120 enemy aircraft while defending sectors in any number of battles. Kind of an odd mission to have. Uh, for a heavy fighter pilot because you don't typically if you're defending the whole game in a heavy fighter then you're doing it wrong um, I guess one off battles could have that situation but if that's your mindset when you're going into a battle is I'm going to defend a sector with my heavy fighter then, then you're doing it wrong you want to be in a fighter or a multi role fighter when you're defending sectors they're just better at it um, 120 enemy aircraft while defending sectors is going to take a while um you know, if you're averaging five, if you're averaging five per game, it's going to take you 25 battles. Um, so, yeah, um, not difficult, just going to be time consuming. Mission number five, receive a conqueror achievement. This was actually the final mission, I believe, for the SCUA 1 uh, tier three premium. It's 450 capture points. You don't need to do it in a sortie. You just need to do it in a battle. Um, it counts capture as both attacking a sector and defending a sector. I've gotten conqueror achievements simply by defending sectors uh, in my A7M and things like that. Um, so keep that in mind. Conqueror can be difficult, but just make sure that whatever you're doing, whatever you're killing is inside a sector. So you're getting capture points either defending or attacking that kind of situation. You get some uh, boosters out of the deal. You, um, help your aircraft experience, which is nice for grinds. 
Mission number six. Deal 400,000 hit points of damage to ground targets in any number of battles. <sighs> Seems like a lot, right? Um, and it could be a lot. But I'd recommend going in, in the highest tier uh, uh, ground attacker or bomber that you've got. Anything else that you do can do it. Multi-role fighters, heavy fighters to a lesser extent. Fighters don't do it. Um, but 400,000 is going to take a while, even in a tier 10 multi-role fighter. So going out in a bomber... Um, the higher tier you've got, the better. Ground attacker, the higher tier the, you've got, the better. Um, I guarantee there's going to be some people out there that can do this in, in three battles. Um, it's not going to take me three battles, but I will definitely be taking out uh, some tier 9 and tier 10 ground attackers to get this completed. Get some more uh, specialization parts, weapon parts, and flight instruments. Mission 7. 100,000 personal points in any number of battles. Again, any number of battles is nice. If you've got a couple bad games, what would you do? It doesn't matter. It still goes towards 100,000 personal points, uh, and you can get that completed. You get some premium uh, emergency medical kits. If that's your thing, you can use them. Mission number eight, destroy 150 air defense aircraft in any number of battles. Um, you get some emergency engine cooling uh, premium um, consumable for this one. Now, this one is a little nuanced, right? 150 air defense aircraft. That doesn't mean, you know, it, it could be the white air defense aircraft or the red air defense aircraft. It doesn't matter what team they're on. Uh, but you want to be in a plane that's tip is obviously attacking sectors all the time. And not just attacking sectors, but attacking the sectors in the air. So your best bet is typically going to be a heavy fighter or maybe a multi-role fighter. Yeah, there's going to be some fighter regular fighters that could do this. Uh, but you're typically going to want something that's a little bit quicker. Um, so you can get from sector to sector and actually attack those sectors. Any number of battles, um, but this is going to take a while, right? About 20, 25 battles, I would say, uh, for somebody that's, you know, that's above average. Um, it could conceivably take you a hell of a long time if you're only getting like three air defense aircraft killed every battle. So keep that one in mind. Mission number nine. This one is a single battle mission. Uh, destroy five enemy attack aircraft in a single battle. So this is defeating the ground attackers. Um, you only need to get five, which is nice, because there's been missions where you need to get eight, and that's like, okay. Um, these are, let me see, are these tier, yeah, tier four and above. I should have known that. Um, tier four and above battles typically are only going to have two ground attackers. Uh, the sweet spot for this might be tier six again because ground attackers from tier six um, and below um, are pretty defenseless, and so you can just pick on them. And so, yeah, that would be my recommendation. You get a supply crate out of the deal, which is always nice. Mission 10, receive a flying guardian badge. So this one's kind of odd. Flying guardian badge you can only get in a fighter and a multi-role fighter. You need to destroy eight enemy aircraft while you're defending a sector so remember those enemy aircraft need to be in the sector when you kill them and you need to do eight so it's going to be kind of map dependent if you can get a decent map where you can camp out a sector and all the enemies just keep coming at you and you've in a a plane where you're pretty good and you can just defend that sector flying guardian badge is not the the most difficult kind of badge to get but if you keep getting bad maps or you're taking out the wrong plane, then you can certainly have issues. All right, for mission number 11 is participate in capturing 20 sectors in any number of battles. Uh, you get some more specialization parts, heat resistance, and radio electronics. Technically, this can be completed in any, uh, you know, any aircraft. I mean, capturing sectors is capturing sectors. Uh, what the other the other night I was streaming and and I captured eight sectors in a fighter. It's not always going to happen that way, right? You typically want to go out in um, a ground attacker, bomber, or heavy fighter, or multi-role fighter. Uh, but, you know, it can be done in any uh, in any aircraft. So, you know, just do it for your dailies in any number of battles. Mission number 12, we're getting down to the end here. Destroy 220 sections of ground targets in any number of battles. You get some uh, some premium consumables again. Uh, this is going to be the best uh, done in a ground attacker or a bomber. Yeah, heavy fighters can do it uh, to a very lesser extent. Multi-role fighters can do it. Uh, but, you know, ground attackers and bombers are built for doing it. And so you're going to want to, you know, take advantage of take advantage of those two particular plane types um, to get mission number 12 completed. 
Mission number 13, destroy seven enemy aircraft while attacking sectors in a single battle. So this one's a little, it's nuanced, right? You do get um, some gas operated action. Um, but keep in mind, enemy aircraft means everything but the attack air, um, the air defense aircraft and the bombers, um, you know, the bombing runs that go happen. So you literally need to be destroying, you know, those, those red team needs to die while in the sector while you're attacking it um so your best bet on this kind of plane uh type is typically going to be a heavy fighter or a multi-role fighter again fighters can do this as long as you've got a uh, one that can you know go to a sector and and get there quickly enough um seven enemy aircraft while attacking sectors you're gonna have to go to at least two sectors typically and sometimes three different sectors so again that's why you typically want a heavy fighter because they're going to be fast enough to get from sector to sector as needed. Um, not necessarily difficult. You just got to think about this one. This one's not going to be one. Yeah, you can get it on your dailies while you're not even thinking, but it's going to be a lot easier if you're, you're okay, I need to go to this sector. Don't attack the air defense aircraft. Attack just the enemy aircraft. Get them killed at least first um, and then go for the air defense aircraft if I need to. Mission number 14 uh destroy five enemy heavy air fighters in a single battle good thing about this is you know you can kill them anywhere it's only five um so you know go find the enemy heavies and go kill them um there's two different thoughts on on how to do this one is to get in your own heavy fighter that you know is good at taking out other enemy heavy fighters um you know and and utilize that particular plane for uh for that battle i mean p38l is a, is a great example of that uh the other thought process is i mean there's some really great regular fighters that are great at taking on heavy fighters i can think of a couple uh, in the high tiers like a a swift a ta 183 a, a mig 15 um those type of planes that go ridiculously fast can keep up uh, with or mostly keep up with the heavy fighters and have the firepower to take them down quickly um but you know, whatever you're comfortable in taking on heavy fighters, have at it. It's going to be different for everybody, I suspect. You get a supply crate with that, so yay. All right, so the last mission is uh, mission 15. Receive a Maguire medal. Uh, you will earn Albrecht Schneider, and it looks like some um, some boosters as well. Uh, Maguire medal, in case you're unaware, is a heavy fighter only medal. You earn that. Um, for earning, uh, you need to earn at least 400 capture points in a sortie uh, while you're in a heavy fighter. So the good thing is about a Maguire is, you know, you don't even need to win the battle to get it. It's not like a Gabreski or a Golubev medal. Um, the Maguire just requires that you get 400 capture points while not dying, basically, um, <laughs> or at least in a single sortie. And so... Um, it's not an impossible metal by any means. It's just one of those when you're trying to get it, that's when it becomes <laughs> frustrating uh, and almost difficult. Um, but again, there's going to be people that can get that right in their first battle just because. Obviously, you need to take out a heavy fighter when you're doing that. So go in a heavy fighter that you're most comfortable in. Um, and yeah, you can earn that Maguire medal. So 15 missions. Um, it's going to take a while. Uh, you know, Nobody's going to get this on... Well, Probably not going to be a day one kind of thing, just because some of them are relatively long uh, winded. Um, you know, some of them are going to be kind of short. A lot of them are going to be single battle kind of ones. Um, but a lot of them, are, a lot, a lot of them are going to take you, um, you know, like I said, twenty to twenty-five battles for some of these, if you're uh, an average to above average pilot. So definitely keep that in mind and be patient. The key to these missions and the key to really any of the missions that are for you know mid to high tier um items whether it's you know pilots at tier six or some of the premium planes that you can earn at tier eight and tier nine from time to time the key is be patient and go in planes that you're you're actually going to enjoy don't go in the meta plane Right. Um, so I might be saying, OK, you know, th this plane, a Swift is going to be great at getting uh, five heavy fighters in a battle. Yeah, it is in my hands. But if in your hands it's not, then don't do that plane just because I said so. Go in your attack plane. Uh, you know, if it's a heavy fighter, multi-role or a, a regular fighter, your plane that's going to do it best for you and not drive you crazy. 
And I, I just say that because I know we, uh, we can get frustrated trying to complete missions like this. Um, and, and so the key, in my opinion, is have fun. Try. If you get it, you get it. If you don't, it's not the end of the world kind of thing. Um, so, you know, just keep that, keep that in mind. I'm definitely looking forward to it. As soon as I earn uh, the Pilot Schneider here, I will be putting him in uh, the ME410 and doing some test flights and give you guys an update. So I certainly hope this was helpful. Um, if it was, please let me know. And are you looking forward to, to getting this pilot? Are you going to be trying to grind for him? I'm assuming you like the ME410 because I don't know anybody that doesn't like the ME410 because, come on, it's the ME410. Yeah, if you're trying to turn in it, you're going to hate it, but don't don't dogfight in an ME410. Just punch him in the mouth and run away. <laughs> anyway, I hope this is helpful. I hope you're excited. Um, I certainly am. We'll see how it goes for the month of September. I hope you have a great day. Bye.